the way you're nothing at all, but I think you're moving too fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, it's oh. time for our Nightcap Spotlight. And on this show, the spotlight is on 22-year-old singer-songwriter Laura Risotto. I met this artist at a radio station, WNYC, and randomly I saw her and I'm like, hey, I just overheard you having a conversation. And she I heard didn't that, say that. No, 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 legit. Like, I overheard her having <laughs> a conversation and I'm like, sounds like you either play music, or write music, record. I don't know what you do, but you have something to do with the music industry and my show needs some artists. So we'd love to have you come on Nightcap. Take she a look that. at her doing her thing. And I know he'll be the death of me, at least we'll both be numb. And he'll always get the best of me, the worst is yet to come. But at least we'll both be beautiful, stay forever young. This I know, this I know. He told me don't worry about it. He told me don't worry no more. But I love it, but I love it, oh, oh, I can feel my face when I'm with you, but I love it, but I love it, and I know he'll be the death of me, at least we'll both be numb, and he'll always get the best of me, the worst is yet to come, all the misery was necessary, Now we showed her doing a cover because later in the show she'll be performing a few of her original songs and she has over 80 to choose from. Yeah, you heard correctly, 8-0. She published them all by herself. Laura got her start in Brazil where she was born and raised. Woohoo! Yes! Summer 16, Olympics, Rio, go Michelle Carter, go Gabby Douglas, Daryl, Rafaela, the Simones, Ms. Bolt, who we have to chat because I'm, I'm disappointed. Miss, <laughs> um... Miss Muhammad, girl, your first name, but I live for you. That's right. Rock, rock your Alice job, Felix honey. Too. Alice yes. and Felix, too. Alice and Felix. She's a I'm sorry. Okay. I just feel like they're warriors. She's warriors. It's Rio. I live. It's all about Brazil. It's all about Brazil. Brazil. At the age of. Let me take you to Rio. Rio. <laughs> so <laughs> annoying. Y'all see what I have to deal with <laughs> on the regular. Okay, so at the age of 15, Laura struck her first record deal with Universal Music Brazil. Her debut album, Made in Rio, garnered her acclaim throughout Brazil and landed her the opportunity to open up for Demi Lovato. Yes, you heard me, Demi. Sonny with a chance, Can't Demi, rock. okay? <laughs> Can't rock. <laughs> About four years ago, Laura left her beloved Rio to study at Berklee College of Music. She then made her way to Los Angeles to release her sophomore album, Reason to Stay. I guess Los Angeles really didn't give her a reason to stay because she left the West Coast to come to our big beloved Big Apple where she is now doing her thing and she is yes. loving it. And she is in Columbia University getting her master's in music. She is just, she just going from coast everything. to coast to she coast to coast. To Please come on out here, Laura. Please join us. Give it up for Laura. Uh, okay. So much energy. Let's, I'm, I'm going to just, oh, just from stepping from there to here, so, I feel much more energized. Really? Yes. Let's talk about your look. Get okay. your look, get your you look. You look great. Catch your look, you will never get this look. Anyway. <laughs> Ever. This is on Laura. Thank you. Okay, Thank now you me. have a catalog of 80 songs. I think I might have actually gone up 100 at this point. Wow. Me too. Yeah. I need me to too. update my website. <laughs> me, I need to update yeah. like my website, discography, everything. So, <laughs> seriously, did you write every single song? Yes, I've, I've, I've done co-writes before with some other writers, um, and I have used to co-write a lot with my brother, who's oh. two years older than me. When I started out, I mostly write by myself, so most of these 80 to 100 songs are all my own. Mm, yeah. Some singers don't well, do that these you, days. Yeah, <laughs> you need to realize that. Over here, we have ghost writers, we have people writing for each other. I know, other, you Yo, know? the industry's crazy too Absolutely. with these things. So. Yes, very much. 
So I want you to take us through the whole music writing process, you know, from conception to actually um, writing the song and producing it and having it all out. So what's that process like? How do you go about doing that? I mean, I think it really varies. Uh, depending on, there are songs that I wrote like Spotlight, I, I remember writing it in like 20 minutes because it just, oh, wow. it was something that I was holding inside for a while and I really needed to find a way to let it out. And the only way I could find to do that was music. So that was really fast. But sometimes like it's an idea that I wrote two years ago and I write it down and then I'm like, why, why I need to finish that? Like what, mm -hmm. what am I gonna add? Like where am I gonna use that? And then two years later you live another situation like, oh, that fits. Mm -hmm. So like that's one of the cool things about a creative process. It's always different and it's always entertaining, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so now I know it's hard to have like a freshman and sophomore album, you know, cause it's really iffy in the music industry. But tell us what are the differences you think that the first album has from the second album? I mean, I, I was, 14 to 16 for th in, in the first album. The, so the songs were from a 14, 16 year old who oh really man. had like no experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the relationships I have were like crushes in school. Yeah. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. you, you get, that can really hit you hard. So like I wrote a lot about that. But as I got older, I think I expanded my point of view about writing about different things. And I just had more life experience to write about. And so mm -hmm. writing got a lot more interesting. So. Awesome. Yeah. So what would you say is the most difficult part of the music process? Is it thinking of a hook, a title, the lyrics? What gets you? I mean, I mean, writing lyrics is my favorite part. Okay. It's always been. I, I usually write my lyrics in English, even though my first language is Portuguese. Mm -hmm. But I guess like in Brazil, poetry was such a huge thing. There's so many amazing writers and authors there. And I think I've always valued that, being able to come up with smart lyrics. But the hardest part? I think it's trying to make it short sometimes. I talk a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so may maybe that maybe that's it, making it like concise. Okay. So, you were 15 when you worked on your first album, Made yes. in Rio. Congratulations, because that's, that's, that's big that's at the cute. age 15. <laughs> so what, what were you doing at 15, Devon? What was I doing at 15? Um, I was in high school looking a hot mess and writing <laughs> scripts that were like, one. the beginning would be good and then the end would be horrible. You were writing scripts? That's awesome. Yeah, I, write, I know, right? <laughs> Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. Hater. Anyways, mm -hmm. what was it like being a teenager and making music and making albums? Because were you like some days you're just like, I want to go out, I want to get the tea, <laughs> I want to hang out with my friends? Or were you really like devoted to music 24-7? I think when I was younger, I didn't feel really the need to go out. Mm -hmm. I think I, I, I grew up working. Like, I've, I've done classical ballet since I was seven years old, and I yeah. used to tap dance, wow. and I was like, classically um, trained on the piano. So I was always studying music and arts and performing. So to me, and still nowadays, I think I, I would always rather be on stage than anywhere else. So I didn't really miss going out all that much, but I... I think when I got older, I, I understood that I needed a little bit more of a balanced <laughs> life. <laughs> you know, grabbing a drink isn't so bad yeah. every once in a while. But but I, I think when I was younger, like I really didn't. I, it was school, and that was socializing enough for me because I I mean I was going to school just to go to school. But um, it was music 24/7, mm -hmm. and it was hard to balance. I'm not gonna lie, because I went to a very strict school. Very, but they were so understanding of my career, especially because I feel like not many artists come from that school. So they were like, okay, you go, go, go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you do your thing. Yeah. So they were great. very supportive. So, yeah. I think it's really interesting that you mentioned the whole thing about you doing ballet when you were younger because I actually have a friend who thinks he did ballet when he was younger too. No, but he didn't. no, you no. Know, we'll get don't to that, do that later. Don't do that. Don't we'll do that. Don't do that. There's a friend in this room. Don't yeah, do that. yeah, yeah. We'll get to <laughs> don't that later. Don't do Because yeah. do, I did, okay? okay? I did. Okay. And I stopped. Because I got criticized for it, and it hurt my feelings. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. No, ballet so is So don't tough. be mad because you didn't get it. <laughs> don't <laughs> be mad because you didn't get those classes. No, but ballet, we'll like, here. it's, no, I know. Like, I, I started when I was, like, seven or eight, and it's tough. The, like, mm -hmm. we, I went to um, the school for the opera house. So it was a public school. You had to audition to get in, and you have to be going through auditions every year. And, like, they would not hold back with criticism for seven-year-olds. Oh. They'd be like, what'd you eat for breakfast, Told girl? Like, you. hot dogs? And you're like, okay. Okay, honey, but it was <laughs> hand given to you. You were in but, the West, okay? okay? It's different other places. Oh. <laughs> Anywho. Hello, someone who's been a president. Okay. <laughs> so once you finish writing a song, who's that one person you go to and you're like, listen to this, how does this sound? Did I do well? What do you think? I trust you, you know. My sister. Okay. Yeah. Always. She's my oh. best friend. Like, me and my sister were soulmates. And Is she older or younger? Younger. Two years oh, younger. Wow. So it's like 20 to 22, and then my brother's going to turn 24 next week. Oh, mm. I'm here for the even numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, after the release of your 
album. You had a, quite a few appearances and performances in Brazil, and one of them was opening for Miss Demi Lovato. Yes. So how was that for you, performing in front of 7,000 people? Wow. I mean, to me, I honestly think it was the most energizing experience I've ever had. I, I've, I've grew up wanting to perform, so the bigger the crowd, I feel like the more energy they're feeding you with. Like, you people are like energy. Emotional? I don't think I was, I was just so happy. I was like, yo, whew, let's do this. You know? It's like seven, again, like the amazing thing about performing is the exchange of energy contact that you have with the audience. So, so since the audience was so big, I was so pumped up and you're put in such a powerful position being on stage as well. I'd be like, everybody wave your hands up in the air. It's like, it's the dream of a performance. So I had, and I That's admire cool. Demi Lovato so much as an artist. So yeah, it was. She's doing a great job. Yes. To be a Disney Channel star. That girl can sing. The same. Mm -hmm. He's throwing shade at Disney Channel. I am <laughs> really not. I'm uncalled not. for. I'm, oh not. I'm not. I'm really not. So when you decide to record a song, do you go about looking for a producer or a musical engineer? Uh, the musical, I mean, both of them are really important. Okay. When I'm looking for a song to be produced, the first thing I look is into is finding a producer that feel, I feel I can work with the song. Okay. And But the sound engineer is also very important to make sure you get the sound you want. And mixing, yeah. mastering, these are keys, mm -hmm. you know, for the success of a song. Absolutely. So I guess a little bit of both, but the first step usually for me is a producer. producer. Yeah. Okay. So your second album, Reason to Stay, yes. please share with us why the title. Uh, I mean, I really thought that the, I mean, I've moved to America when I was 17, to America, to the U.S. I have to think this thing was saying in America, mm -hmm. but it's like oh, th 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 three different Americas, but anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that it was a way of me, like, of, like, putting my foot to the ground and being like, this is why I'm supposed to be in this country, mm -hmm. you know, my music, this is where the entertainment industry is, and this is why I'm here. And also I felt like the song, Reason to Stay, which one of, one of the singles was the first single mm -hmm. of the album, really defined the message that I wanted to give with the whole album, the concept musically, and that it was a little bit edgier than my past work, so I think that was why. And the music video is really cool. You guys should check it out on YouTube. Yes, it's everybody cool go check out Reason to Stay music yes. video. Right now. I mean, not right right now. But right now, because you're watching Nightcap. <laughs> yeah. What? Okay. I mean, your phone, you're probably on your phone anyway, so you could just like... You go on your computer live. if you yes. got a computer. No, phone. Computer, walk away from TV, watching Nightcap. You're no doing a lot. Okay, you know, I'm just trying to think about it <laughs> analytically, you know? We need to take notes right now. Okay. About exactly. So many <laughs> notes. Okay. Yeah. So how long does it take typically to record a song? I think with me, I'm pretty fast. I mean, for the, for the two albums that I did, I think that we already had the idea for instrumentation down mm -hmm. so well. I think, for example, for Reason to Stay, I did all of the vocals for the 11 tracks, including backing vocals in two and a half days. So that was really, really fast, I think. Um, for Made in Rio, I think it was a similar thing. But for one song nowadays, sometimes I take, if it counts with producing, I might take about a week to make sure that we're producing everything right. And But it depends on the schedule with the producer as well. So it, var it varies, really. Vocally, I record all of the vocals in one day, or maybe two, but yeah. And what was the process of making this album similar to the first? Um, I really wanted to make, I feel like the second album was a transitional album. I'm now working on my third, which is going to oh, be a different sound. Oh my nice. God. Can we, can we, can we know what's, what's the different sound? Uh, I'm, it's it's gonna be edgier for sure. Ooh. It's always edgier. Like yeah, I, we love edgy. We love edgy. We love, the we love edges. 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 We love edgy. Edges. <laughs> Everything. We love it all. Yeah, uh, I'm so excited because I, I think I wrote the songs for the third album more thinking about what I like to do on stage, and I really when I'm moving, I move a lot. So I wanted to like do things that would make me want to move my hips a little mm -hmm. bit, and I, I like to say that my style is pop with a growl. So it's a little more, a little, a little sexier too. So I'm excited. I mean, I'm a woman now. I can yeah. do these things. I love that artists create their it. own genres in a way. You know, yes. you're like, you know, I do rap, but I do like a different type of rap. Yeah, and like, know, it's like, so hard I have putting a twist on rap. You know, I yeah. really love that. It makes you like an independent artist. It makes you who you are as an artist. I love it. It's important because like a lot of people like ask you like, what genre are you in? And I'm like, pop, but like in pop, yeah. it's and Calvin Harris is pop. pop. Yeah, like, when you say pop, people just go like, huh? Like, yeah, it's oh such a broad mm -hmm. genre. So I'm yeah. like, pop with the growl because I like to growl. And it's, I feel like it just describes it. Mm -hmm. If you listen to it, you'll know. Edgy. But yeah. Yes, uh, but then I, I felt like the second one had to be, it's a little bit of a mix of a new style, a little bit darker sounding, and also a little bit of the influences that I had um, for my first album, which was a lot more Taylor Swift, that mm -hmm. kind of vibe, like okay. a little bit of a country vibe, which was weird to me because I didn't really listen to country music, but it came out like that, so I was like, <laughs> yeah. cool. <laughs> cool. Cool, let's dip and dive. Yeah. So...
let's talk about the cover of your album. Yes. The cover of her album. <laughs> can we have a close up? Or are we acting we, for too much? Are we acting for too much? Where are we? Reason to say. The second album from Miss Laura. <laughs> <laughs> the guitar. What's up with the guitar? How'd you learn to play? Um, I actually learned most of what I know on YouTube. <laughs> really? Yes. Wow. I used to already, I, I mean, I've classically trained on the piano for like eight years, so I already had a great foundation with music, but I wanted to learn a new instrument, and my mom had this nylon guitar that was really old, which was really, really crappy. Mm. But I was like, well, I'm not going to ask for a guitar <laughs> before I learn how to play. Sure. So I just started going on YouTube and, and like learning songs, and I started writing songs that were easy enough for me to play because some of them had like bar chords and I couldn't manage that at the time. Mm -hmm. But I just did that. I did a few lessons afterwards to like clean it up a little bit, but yo, YouTube is everything you need, mm -hmm. so. YouTube. I feel like we don't utilize Go YouTube learn. as much as we you, can. Do you like have any other instruments that you play or learn from on YouTube? <laughs> I know a little bit of the ukulele. <gasps> from um, YouTube? Yes. Uh, and, um, I feel like I know the ukulele from Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> but we'll share it. <laughs> like a little tutorial from Little Stitch. That yeah. would be so cool, though. I feel like kids would relate to that on YouTube. Anyway. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, ukulele, I play a little bit of the electric guitar, too. I'm starting to get a little more into that because it's more fun when you're playing on stage. Mm. And But my main instrument besides voice is piano, keys, for sure. Keys. Okay. She's got the keys. <laughs> the keys, you the keys. So <laughs> so as you know, there are many people out there who are trying to break into the music industry right now, and it is not an easy industry to go into. Yeah. So what are some ugly truths that you have discovered? Um, ugly truths that I have discovered? I mean, I feel like I've had, compared to, I, I grew up in this industry, but my parents have always been around. My family has always been very supportive, so I feel like I was, there was a certain shield for a lot of mm -hmm. things. I think it, uh, the number one thing is people promise you a lot of stuff. And it's like you have to be really like cold with these things in the sense that they're gonna promise you're like okay okay just mm -hmm. don't get too excited too soon don't oh. spread the word th about things until yeah. they're actually happening because mm -hmm. people are gonna be like you're gonna be a star you're gonna do these shows from these amazing arenas and you're like okay once you're like all like a week away from the thing or you're ac it's actually happening okay. just don't speak up about it mm -hmm. and just be careful with shady people especially women in this industry have to be very very careful low key in with any the industry camera and yeah girl. But I think especially in the entertainment industry where it's yeah. like so, ma like the, the, it's so, there's so many men that are in the power, powerful position and I think people are so passionate about their art that sometimes they start forgetting their values a little bit with mm -hmm. these things and start opening up exceptions and it's something that you don't, some, you sometimes you don't even realize it's mm -hmm. happening. So it's important to have like friends and if your family can be around, I think it's really important. You heard it here. More first. artists need to be like you. I ain't saying oh, right. Thank you. Like, I ain't, I ain't I'm saying glad that. you know I'm just that. Saying, and like, you know, no. she's the standard. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> other artists are the. I'm just lucky, and my family has been with me this through Definitely. this entire time. Yes, family sure. is everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like Lilo and Stitch family means nobody gets left okay. behind. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I don't know what's up with the Lilo and Stitch references I don't today, know. but I'm Loki here for it. You here for it? So, what do you ultimately hope to achieve within music? I think my purpose with music is just to bring light. I feel like I was questioning, like, why do I do this? And I think people have different ways of achieving their purpose, and I feel like that's what I want to do, even sometimes when it's in little ways. Mm -hmm. But music, I think it's the way that I have a platform to do that for people. Um, so I want to just reach the biggest audience that I can and hopefully play music around the world and spread that message and love around the world. I think that's, that's amazing. so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm the ideal artist. Oh, yeah. I'm the more ideal. Let me make you oh love God. me even more. Okay, cool. yeah. okay, all right, before we go and let you get ready for your performance, yeah. as I mentioned earlier, we have a little someone here who thinks that they used to do ballet. And we know that you did ballet for seven years, so I just want to know if that you can like show us a little bit of your moves and oh my god, <laughs> show this person show us. how oh. to dance ballet because this they just person, to really know how okay, to first dance of all, stop throwing shade. You're just mad okay. yeah, because you don't know what ballet is. That's, that's it. So funny. You're mad. Somebody's mad. Never been asked to do that. It's so cool. Wait, okay. Lauren, do you smell that? <laughs> smell some salt. Oh my. <laughs> Someone salty. Oh my god. Sodium okay. levels too high. Um. Okay. Let me show us. I mean, Let's I'm in the heel, see. so this is a little bit of a challenge. Oh this is God. first All position. Right. This is you, this is you. So I know this is first, Let's and go. then usually when Wait. you're waiting, and yeah, then you just, like, just preparatory. Just right. Dance to the side. There you go. I, I I know the words like and the way we said it in Portuguese, so it's like French but with a Portuguese accent. Oh no, they would so. just like okay. So my teacher's really mean. He would just be like start, and then like until he finished getting ready or whatever, like the guy on the piano would awkwardly play, and we'd just be like. Okay, like <laughs> yeah, like and we plie. do that until he finishes doing whatever he's doing. Really, yeah. just like standing doing plies. Yeah, plie and he would sometimes do it for long, 
that's horrible. <laughs> I mean, I, the, our school was really straight. Like, we would always have to be standing still the entire time until she said, okay, and then we'd be like. And it was like this rule that we, like, let's say this is my bar, and I had to be here. And if I, I didn't, I couldn't turn around on this side because it was disrespectful. I had to always turn around from the inside. I had a hard time with bars because, like, look at these arms. So when yeah. I was younger, they were growing, and I just, like, would get tired and bend my arm. <laughs> You straight like, out your arm, straight out your arm. You get really good time. muscle, like muscle on your shoulders because of how, I, I, when that's I stopped dancing. That's why I can't carry dancing, now these days. Cause no, I, I, when I stopped dancing, that's when I realized like how strong my shoulders were from just being doing this. All the time? Yes, and just being like, poor to bra. I told you, this is our connection. You're just mad. You know something Jeez. I noticed? As she was talking about all the moves, you were like, yeah, 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 the bar. No, you didn't know the bar. <laughs> uh -uh. She was like, You're yeah, so yeah, fake. like them. I was like, uh, -uh. Yo, Beverly is <laughs> so <laughs> fake. Beverly is so fake. You know what? We're done with you. Laura, now, <laughs> Laura's second sophomore album, yes. Reason to Stay, is available everywhere. iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, get your copy. I'm not playing with you. Buy yes, it, um, I don't stream know if you it. Noticed. You're is it on Title 2? I feel like they're going to be scared of it. Is it on Title? <laughs> is, wait, is it on Title 2? <laughs> what? Is it on Title? Yes, I think so, yeah. It's, it's everywhere. Exclusively it's everywhere. on Title, like every album, like ever, right now. Yes. Please oh go get God. it. Everybody give it up for Laura. Thank Wait, you. no, but this album should give you a reason to stay. So keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> reason to stay, because she's performing up next. Go get Laura's reason to stay. Reason to stay. I feel like I have to say it again. Reason to stay. OK, reason to leave. <laughs> hey, everybody. My name is Laura Risotto. I am a singer-songwriter from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, but I live here in New York City. I'm going to be playing a few songs for you guys, and uh, this first one it's actually for my first album made in Rio and I wrote it when I was about I think 15 um, I mean I'm a musician and I went to a very strict strict school when I was younger and people there wanted to be lawyers or doctors and I wanted to play music <laughs> so I felt like a fish out of water all the time and before this chemistry exam that I had I knew that I didn't know absolutely nothing and I was so pissed off because my teacher said I wouldn't be anybody if I didn't study chemistry I ended up writing the song saying that's cool. This is who I am. So I hope you relate. One, two, three. Have you ever felt this misunderstood? They thought you were trying to climb a mountain when you aimed for the river. Mm. I thought that I'd get used to this, but it only felt good When I tried to resist and do what I thought I should But I'm not wrong, I'm just a little bit crazy Maybe a little too lazy to change myself for somebody else Well, I'm a fish out of water, growing up in my own time But no one can hold me back when I'm making my own vibe don't understand mm, why people see who I'm supposed to be instead of who I am. No, no, no. Mm. Instead of who I am. Instead of who I am. Yeah. Mm. Well, I don't want to feel like I'm wasting time. So, baby, baby, are you feeling me? Get on the wave or get in the line. Why even try to fit in when I want to stand out? Personality's no sin. How do you love me now? But you're not wrong. You're just a little bit crazy to think you're the one that can save me from myself. Well, I don't need your help because I'm a fish out of water growing up in my own time. But no one can hold me back when I'm making my own vibe. Well, I'm a fish out of water, and I don't understand why people see who I'm supposed to be instead of who I am. No, 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 no. Instead of who I am. Instead of who I am. No, no. Instead of who I am. But if there's someone left to blame, I'm sorry, nature can't be tamed. I was born like this. And who has never felt this piss? Well, I hope someday you come around when I have it all figured out. And then you will see 
that I'm all I was supposed to be just a fish out of water growing up in my own time but no one can hold me back when I'm making my own vibe well I'm a fish out of water I don't understand why people see who I'm supposed to be instead of who I am just a fish out of water growing up in my own time but no one can hold me back when I'm making my own vibe. Well, I'm a fish out of water, and I don't understand why people see who I'm supposed to be instead of who I am. No, 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 no. Instead of who I am. Instead of who I am. So this next song is called Spotlight, and it's off of my second album, Called Reason to Stay. Um, by the way, that is available for um, download on iTunes and Spotify and all everything you can find. Uh, <laughs> I wrote this song about a relationship, not necessarily romantic, but um, you know when you see that someone's clearly being manipulated and you feel so hopeless that they're putting aside the things that matter the most, they're not putting in the spotlight what's actually important. Um, and so I wrote this song when I was feeling really helpless with a friend, and I usually write my songs in English, even though my first language is Portuguese. But for this one, I wrote a Portuguese version for it just because it felt really natural, and I'm gonna mix a little bit of both languages for you guys. So don't be surprised if I start singing in a different language. <laughs> this was planned. <laughs> this one's called Spotlight. You only want me when it's convenient And she's not around You accuse me of being too much while I'm getting sick of standing in the background I take a risk, step into center stage She cuts me off, you remain silent You're just a puppet hanging from her fingertips every day 